This is Hockey Talk. Hey! Who is this? Who is this? Who is this? Let's meet the players from the Green Bay Gamblers. Yes! Welcome back to our program here. We'll check in with Pat a little bit later on. He is uh, in the midst of the top prospects game in Kearney, Nebraska. So we'll hopefully get him a little bit later on. But that gives us time to meet our player guests tonight. Uh, Gamblers defenseman Ryan Verrier and Gamblers forward Paul Moss. You guys were kind of bickering when I walked in here. One's a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. One's a New England Patriots fan. Wow. wow. So... Ryan, you're from Reading, Massachusetts, yeah, right? Reading. Re- Reading. Reading, correct? Yeah. It's it's how, it's, it's it's how spe- we say yeah. it in Wisconsin. It's spelled <laughs> Reading, but it's Reading. Yeah. And Butler, PA, right, Paul? Yeah, Butler, PA. It's a little north of Pittsburgh. So I know how understanding that Paul was about Deflate Gate, right? Because you've let it go. I've not let it go. And the catch, right? The catch that was not a catch was that a catch this year? Should have been a catch. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, both teams are in the playoffs, so I want to get your honest opinion. Who's going to end up on top? Is it going to be your Pittsburgh Steelers, boss, uh, Paul, or is it going to be your New England Patriots, Ryan? Um, uh, obviously, I think it's going to be the Patriots. Um, they seem to have the best football during the playoffs as well. And I don't. it's hard for me to argue with it because I'm not a huge football guy. But it's really easy to be a Patriots fan because they win all the time. Oh, Paul's blood wow. is just boiling right now. They wow. win all the time. And now, I mean, your rebuttal, I mean, Paul? I mean, Pittsburgh, city of champions. That's all I have to say. You know, back to back Stanley Cups. Well, we that, got that, six that, Super Bowls. It's, you know, it's well done, but that has nothing to do with the Steelers yeah. themselves. But. Hey, the Steelers, <laughs> Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell, Big Ben. That's all you need. And Tomlin's uh, not not too shabby either. Right? Yeah. He's not too shabby is, either. Is Brown rightfully Plus, so an MVP candidate? Oh, absolutely. The guy's unreal. He's outstanding. But so, Brady's he, getting old, and I think that's going to come back to hurt him this year. Well, I clearly haven't read the new book, TB12 Method, because he might be looking like he's getting old, but inside he's not, and he's he's got another couple of years in him. Um the only Soft. issue that the Patriots have to, is their defense. To Ryan's point, though, Ben Roethlisberger looked a little bit old, too, yeah. right? I think, right, I mean, they didn't. They don't have Edelman, which is an issue for me because that's my favorite player. Um, but their running game is strong. Look, uh, look at these two Tom, hockey guys with some football knowledge. <laughs> Tom, right here. Tom, obviously. Holy, yes, one question. They're going to take over yeah, the show. Yeah, they got this. Tom, obviously, is, you know, sometimes – because the thing is, I don't understand. Like, I wish I had his mental strength that he has. Because in so many games, they've been from like they've come from behind. And if you're a Patriots fan, if you see him down, it doesn't even matter what the score is. Like, you'll be at like a friend's house or something, and no one's going crazy because at the end of the game, they win <laughs> every single time. You guys have TB12, but do you guys have a Juju Smith Schuster? No, we got the guy Gronk. lit up perfect. He's a wide receiver. He, yeah, they're we, calling him the next Heinz Ward. They might be. I think we well, just have too many you offensive guys, weapons. You guys you. definitely don't have Brett Hundley. That's for sure, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, Thank you, Kyle. Guys got so, a cannon. So you guys are from out east. What do you like about Green Bay so far since you've gotten here? Um, I like kind of the atmosphere that I, well, I haven't seen in a while because obviously the Packers aren't playing anymore. But um, thanks for bringing that yeah. up. Yeah. Appreciate it. But. Uh, my the first time there was actually a Packers game, I went to the first game, and that was a completely different experience that I think everyone should probably experience once in their life. Um, the atmosphere of the people, kind of downtown, and uh, just everyone's coming together. There's houses with you know people on the outside watching the game that's in the garage, and people are just tailgating all over the place. I, I haven't seen that out in uh, New England, so it's pretty cool to. It's Wisconsin. You yeah. find any reason to drink and tailgate, right? Oh yeah. Hey, the Packers is something else, though. I mean, I agree with you. The first time you see it, it blows it's your crazy. mind. Yeah, it it absolutely sure. blows you away. The people that grow up with it don't really understand how special it is. When you're an outsider coming in, it's unbelievable. It's Paul, crazy. Paul, what about your time in Green Bay so far? Oh yeah, I actually went down to a Packer game. I don't remember when it was, but it was Packers versus the Ravens, and it was freezing cold outside and. All I have to say is, like, everybody at the stadium, like, the game wasn't great. 
it was a 13 nothing loss, but everybody stayed. A lot of people <laughs> were still into the game, were, were hardcore fans, and there were a ton of people there just no matter what was going on. So that was really cool. I like uh, how it's like a small town feel, but like there's people here. Yeah. So it's, it's a cool place to be at. It's different from the East Coast. But it's a lot more spread out. I don't know how spread out it was when I first got here until I saw a sign that said Green Bay, 100,000 people, and I was like, <laughs> I don't see 100,000 yeah, people. Right. Kind of just leads into Appleton. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just here, even. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's exactly. Out, yeah. And also the people, the people are uh, a lot nicer compared to out east. Yeah. I'm trying to rethink of a story that... Oh, it was actually... I came out here... Um, and it was the first home game, and I wanted to wear the new suit that I got, I brought from out home. And uh, when I got it, I accidentally, well, the store didn't take off the uh, security tag. So I, I brought it. I brought it to the, the, the mall, right, in uh, Green Bay right here. Um, and the lady that we brought it to, well, I didn't know that the security, like, they're different shapes from, like, different states or I different know, stores. I that. It's crazy. And so she went running all over the mall just to find it to the perfect match for like 15 minutes to get off of me and then she just gave it to me and said have a nice day if you're out east out in Boston they would have told you to go home they've been like they'd be like, Midwest they'd be like, hospitality. They'd be like they would think you stole that and they'd be calling the cops or something like that I was like oh but yeah it's, it's great I have a funny story with that I went I went to a store back east that I had a tag that they didn't take off the day before and they wouldn't take it off the next day when I brought it in out east. There's a difference. Yeah. There's a, there's there is a right. difference. Midwest hospitality right there. Yeah. Unbelievably cool people. What um, I asked Josh and Rory, we, we grabbed lunch after we did the school thing today, uh, but what is, do you think, the, the toughest rink to play in the USHL? Other than the Rash Center. Yeah, besides ours. Besides, yeah. That um, you guys are 12-2 and two at. Mm-hmm. I mean, this year from personal experience uh omaha was a tough barn to play in and waterloo that night was pretty loud but uh it was their military night but uh, that's a tough rink to play on in general it's a bigger sheet so those are the two that i thought were pretty hard to play against lincoln was also pretty crazy yeah lincoln was wild too yeah um not just because of fans because it was so tight and uh they were just a hiding team and <laughs> us none of the kids on our team were like oh we don't want we don't want any part oh, of that. Right now. The teams out west, man, they hit hard, right? Yeah, there's, yeah. there's, there's some very physical Physically. teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they seem to be a little bit bigger than the teams on the east, in my yeah. opinion. <laughs> Cedar Rapids is probably the most physical in the east. <laughs> yeah, they have been for a while, haven't they, Jason? <laughs> it's a, no, Dubuque. Dubuque's Dubuque the, is Dubuque's very physical, physical, right? Mm-hmm. Dubuque is a team that physical. yes, they're tough. That's a tough place to. Yep. I guess Josh told Josh Dunn told me I didn't know this stat. I probably should, but uh, Pat has never won in Dubuque. Yeah, I've actually heard that as well. Did we lose in the preseason? Yeah, Yeah, I think we did. Isn't that crazy? Like, how many games that we've played out there and whatnot, and yet in in good teams, too. And we had those heartbreaking losses in the playoffs a couple years ago, but I Hmm. I just don't like Dubuque. Yeah, I actually... (laughs) I'm not a big fan. I don't like Dubuque very much either. I mean, I used to be a member of the Dubuque Fighting Saints beginning of last year, so they're not my biggest fan. (laughs) So, so we had this wild game on Friday night. Only one game this weekend for the Green Bay Gamblers. Central Illinois was in town. And, Paul, you mixed it up a little bit. You got your hands dirty, got into a little bit of a, a scrap out there. It was good to see. Oh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was kind of coming all game. They ran Maxi in the second period, which nobody really appreciated on our team. He's our best player. We got to protect him. And... Uh, you know, that kid asked me to fight earlier in the game, and in the third period, the stars just aligned, and it happened. <laughs> Billy, we, do you have that clip? Let's Can we play that clip, Kyle? Come the gamblers. Here's a fight. Rolls down. And here comes Boss. Boss, big right. Boss, time out. He's landing an uppercut, and down he goes. I think you threw even in the uh, listening to the clip. You threw in the uppercut, too. I like to see that. Oh, he, that, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a nice little move when you can get it. <laughs> it's not always open, but when you do, you, you love to see that. Well, and I'm not a hockey guy, and Scott, maybe you can help me out, though, but if you're punching a helmet, I'd like to go under the helmet, right? You you're would like gonna, to, and it, the worst go. part is visors. I mean, visors are what break hands, so most of the time you want to try to get the helmet off before you start throwing any kind of punch if it's uppercut or straight on or get so, the visor off first. So just as a fan myself, talking to hockey guys over there on that side of the room, how do you get psyched up then to get into a fight if you're not just out there, 
the adrenaline running. Like you said, it happened. He ran the he ran Max in the first period, and then it, it, it kind of transpired in the third period. You have to get yourself like amped up even more. Like, hey, this is going to happen, or I'm gonna I'm gonna aggravate him until. I mean, most of the time it's emotions. Like you you're either emotional and something just happened, and you kind of want to get back the other team, like get a little revenge. And other times they can be personal personal bouts you, you never know like somebody asks you to fight like they're kind of challenging you kind of calling you out like in my opinion that's like how, how a lot of fights start but also it's just like in the moment something breaks out people are getting aggressive and a fight happens i i don't know i, I think i'm with you but i can tell you that uh, i came home from europe my very first year of playing pro and uh, there's a guy by the name of Toby Harris that I said, you want to go? Let's, let's go. It's the first time I ever went looking for a fight. And I think he hit me 45 times before we skated to the penalty box. I don't remember much after asking him if he wanted to go. So I think it is completely emotional. I agree with you because there's some guys on each team that fight. And they, that's, what they're, that's what they're good at. That's what they do. Less of them than there used to be. Those guys maybe go looking for it. But I think most guys, it's it's right in the moment and boom let's do this so we're gonna step up for a break we're visiting with ryan Verrier and paul moss more to come after this this is hockey talk and wnfl this is hockey talk on 1440 and 101.9 fm wnfl here's jason scott and coach Ben. welcome back to hockey talk on wnfl yeah i'm now visiting with gambler forward paul moss and defenseman ryan Verrier. We're going to open it up. We had a little bit of a uh, poll, I guess, on Facebook. We had fans post questions with a chance to win a four-pack a ticket. And we got some good ones, Scott. I, I mean, I have a book over here. That's good. It, uh, so through them. There were some pretty good ones on there. So now, now, it's time. now it's time to put them in the hot seat. Yeah, here we, we go. We kind of skated through the first segment. Now it's time to get serious with Paul these and These guys Ryan. are pretty confident. I, like guy. I mean, these guys. I like that. Naturals well out here. So with that, we'll start with Paul. This is from Janelle. She wants to know, do you ever laugh at people behind the glass that you scare when you hit somebody up against the glass? Um, or do you notice that? I have laughed a few times. I've noticed it a few times, but it's not something that I do very regularly. But when it does happen, it is you do kind of chuckle to yourself while you're skating by. Can I go off that one? Yes. There's actually, when we're warming up, there's this lady that sits right behind me when we're passing, like, the DD in the beginning. And every time under when my partner sauces over, I chip it, and it hits the glass, and sometimes it's the top. And every time I see the Kumai, the lady freaks out behind me. <laughs> and me and under would laugh at each other, and she's behind us. Do you funny. do that on purpose then after a while? Because I feel like when, we're, when you guys are in practice and people are walking through the dog pound, like, when we're going back and forth, it's like you guys are chipping it high off the glass just to make a point. Because it, it, it's loud. It's, it, it makes you jump. Let me ask you this: During uh, stoppages of play, and players, fans are screaming at you. Sometimes, all kinds of different things. Do you hear them or not? Um, not in really the moment of the game. You're kind of just focused on the bench and what coach is saying, what your teammates are saying. Like you're really locked into what's going on at ice level that you don't really worry about what's going on around you. Ryan, this one's for you. This is from Seth. Does playing hockey video games help improve your level of creativity on the ice? Um, sometimes I like to think it does when I'm playing the game. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if it carries over too much. Um, but obviously I think that it kind of, I guess it can kind of help you a little bit. But uh, it hasn't really ever carried over for a game for me. Sometimes when you practice, if you're kind of just trying new things and just like, oh, well, I did this in a video game, maybe it happened in real life. Um, but it doesn't always work out like you like to think it would. Um, yeah. Um, I'd like to add to that. I mean, I've had some success with uh, some Chell moves in real life, so i got to give at least 5% of my game to Chell. Hey, in video games, there isn't a 200-pounder coming across the ice ready to kill you like there is in real-life hockey. I mean, it's a little different, isn't it? Well, it just depends if you're playing the Bruins and you got to go against Chara. So. <laughs> Kerry wants to know any because you guys are six zero zero and one right now. Any winning streak rituals? Um, after we sweep a team uh, on a weekend, we have a sweep chant. Whether we're home or away, we uh, we all we do a little chant um, that usually Matt Jennings le leads. Um, and then after we win a game, 
Um, we always give out a hammer, which is like half a dum- half a dumbbell. Uh, like one side of it's taken off and like a, a cowbell. So that's for like the player of the game. Oh, there you go. Nice. Any rituals like for you, Scott, when you were playing? Any uh, any things that your teams did uh, that you remember? Not that I can talk about on the radio. It's, uh, <laughs> times have changed a lot there. But no, I, I think every player has superstitions and things like that. But it's a great, I think it is a great team bonding thing. We had a, a work helmet, a construction <laughs> helmet at one point. That was that was over in Sweden where the player of the game would uh, you know get the construction helmet and then they'd pass it to the next player after that you know if whoever it was the next game so it was kind of a cool thing to bring us all together players passing it to players which I liked but to Paul and Ryan Kerry wants to know how do you handle the smell of the locker room <laughs> um, I don't think the locker room smells that bad <laughs> that's one person's opinion but it's yeah. coming from a hockey player <laughs> it's you're you really become like nose blind to it after a while yeah. it's just I don't really recognize it unless like I'm right up against it. Like, I notice it more on people. Yeah. Like the other players, if someone like sits down really close to me, and like I'll let them know, like you smell pretty bad. <laughs> but um, other You're than that. You're comfortable with your teammates. Yeah. Well, for the yeah. fans out there, these guys have glove warmers even. I mean, before you go into the locker room where you put your gloves on these dryers to keep the gloves fresh and keep them from smelling 30 years ago, they didn't have stuff like that where it was disgusting. Yeah. Slimy gloves, but it's uh, any more. Some new technologies. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it gives us some some luxuries. Yeah, pretty awesome. For the two of you, Heather wants to know, what foods do you miss the most that you can't get here? Chick-fil-A. <laughs> yeah. It's just a fact. Not open on Sunday. I mean, <laughs> I have, we have, like, clam chowder, lobster, and all that stuff come from, the, like, the East Coast. But they have it out here, but it just... It's it doesn't. It doesn't. It's not the same. It can't compare. It really can't it's compare. Like yeah, going that good point. That. The seafoods. It's, I Valid think the point. seafoods a little better on the east coast because oh, it's 100%. so close. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the sushi's over there. Pretty. There's good. nothing like having a little lobster trap and bringing it up, yeah. and then just eating it right from there. <laughs> you do that? Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. All my. I mean, most people do. I mean, usually they're not even your lobster traps. Like you beat your friends or something. You just drive on the like on the boat, just pull them up. Oh. If I was a if I was a GM of a, a team or a USHL, I'd be like, I'm trading for the kid because he's from the East Coast, but he's got to bring a case of lobsters. <laughs> like I, it's part of the deal. I actually mailed out some fresh clam chowder to my bill parents for Christmas, so we have oh, it waiting at home oh, right now. Nice. You ever had a Permanis Brothers sandwich? Mm-mm. Oh, it's these sandwiches that are famous in Pittsburgh. They have fries on them and coleslaw and a bunch of stuff. You, they're amazing. They're huge. You can put eggs on them and you corned beef and. Huh? Sounds like something you can make here. Oh, I mean, I haven't seen it around here, but uh, they're they're pretty tremendous. Yeah, sounds tremendous. I don't know. If, I don't know if Green Bay, other than cheese brats and beer, that we're known for anything. Other a than booyah! That. I'd never heard of booyah, booyah until yeah. I came to Green Bay. Booyah is good. Booyah is good. And beer at church picnics that was new. We got. <laughs> I got. Uh, I know we're behind uh, behind it a little bit on our breaks, but one more question for the both of you. Uh, this is from Susan. Can you hear people who badmouth you from the stands, and does it affect your game? No. Uh, I usually like it because that means you're kind of good enough where they notice <laughs> you. But I uh, usually don't hear I usually have my bill of parents come after me and tell me if they heard my name come from the crowd or not. But uh, they know I love it. So, But other than that, you're, you really don't hear anything. Yeah, I've never noticed it. Uh, in three years playing junior hockey, I've never really let it affect me or noticed anything coming from the stands. Well, you guys are on a heck of a run right now. We appreciate your time in the studio. we got to let you go so you guys can catch the movie. Ryan Verrier, Paul Moss, thank you for coming tonight. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us.